Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. I'm Colin Larkin. I'm the director of Gambrinus. I'm one of the creators of Gilded Engineering, and I'm here with Angelo. Say hi. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this nice Gamescom day. So Angelo is on a phone call with me, and hopefully we can hear everyone. <laughs> I already see someone in chat saying they were singing along. Someone didn't mute their mic. Yeah, I think that was me moving my chair around, getting ready. Shuffle, shuffle. Um, so I guess you can hear us both. Say yes in chat if you can hear myself and Angelo. And we're going to play through maybe our whole demo. We'll see how we do of Ultimate Edition. So a little history. Guild of Dungeoneering was our first game. We released it in 2015. And um, Ultimate Edition is our kind of love letter, our remaster um, to the game. So basically, in between, we've kind of leveled up our skills and had some time to think about Gilded Engineering. And we went back starting last summer and totally rebuilt the game. Um, we rebuilt it in a new engine, Unity, which will let us do a few things a little easier because the original game was built with Flash. And we have gone and tweaked pretty much every, every system. What do you think, Angelo? How much of the game has been re-examined? And I would say that the monsters that you fight are almost identical. We have changed how you fight them, but not what the monsters do. There's some new monsters. Yeah, oh, true. That's that. To 20 something new monsters? Basically, anything we thought that we could improve on, we improved. Yeah. Um, so we've kind of looked at every, we'll, we'll show some of that stuff now and talk about it. We've looked through kind of every, every part of Gilded Engineering. So there's lots of different kind of, it's quite a, a um, deceptively simple game, I think sometimes, but it has quite a few systems that interact. So um, how about we play a little and then we talk. Start a new game and do the whole tutorial experience. Will take time this depending on how much we do. Engineering done. all across the land, they're cheering. Oh, to be a dungeon engineer, chasing fame and glory. So that's our bard. I let him sing there. Um, the Ivory League of Explorers. Um, so I really like one of my favorite things about Gilded Engineering is the name, the Ivory League of Explorers. So that's the other guild, the Goody Two Shoes Guild, the really good at their job guild while you are running the Guild of Engineering which is the lame terrible poorly run and really unkindly run guild and so we, we cast you the player as kind of this unnamed guild master who's uh, been kicked out of the Ivory League of Explorers and wants to start their own guild um, on the cheap and a lot of jokes about abusing your staff and using free chumps and throwing them into the graveyard and it doesn't matter if they die so this is your little guild uh, the first thing you do is you drag out a little card and you get to see it drawn in. The one that's always left behind, the solitary lump, the pawn whose fodder for the grind, the sorry little chump. <laughs> so every time you unlock a new class of Dungeoneer, you get a little song. So that's the one for the chump. And it's kind of one of the ways you um customize your guild right angelo i remember back in 2014 2015 when i was talking about this game it was an rpg but you you know the thing you leveled up was your guild not really any particular character so you unlock new characters and that's kind of like unlocking i don't know perks or uh things like that in a classic rpg it is a quite unique style a few other games came after the guild that doesn't even do it but it was definitely one of the first. Yeah, there wasn't loads back when we back when we made it. Um, came from kind of a, a, a one game a month um, prototype I made, and kind of came up with the idea of like placing down tiles to create a dungeon from you know the likes of playing Carcassonne, the board game, um, and this old um, games workshop game from the nineties called Dungeon Quest. It's a bit like the idea in Carcassonne where you turn over a tile and show you kind of the exits of the room you just walked into. 
and that's where this evolved. Um, and at a certain point, I had the idea of not giving you direct control over your hero, that they would kind of pick where they moved. And that was novel and fun, like novel and interesting, but not at all fun. Um, because without player agency, how do you make the player actually, you know, do anything and have fun playing the game? So we had a lot of, a lot of wrestling with that in the early days and the early prototypes trying to get it um, to actually be fun for the player. So that's still true. You still don't have control over your character as they move around the dungeon. We'll, we'll show that in a little while. Um, but you do take control in battle. I think that is key. So in battle, it's a kind of deck builder. You have uh, battle cards and you improve them by the class you pick. So we'll see the chumps cards in a little while. And the loot you gain give you different cards, different skills that then give you cards. People have been comparing guild with uh, Dungeon Keeper. The classic bullfrog. Uh, yeah, yeah. Not game. I mean, in both, you build a dungeon and you kind of wait for, um, you know, other people to attack you. I guess in Dungeon Keeper, it's more like a, more like a tower defense game before there were tower defense games. Yeah. Kind of the, kind of started that the idea. Role, I think that the role of who you play is in that because it's someone who controls the characters indirectly. Yeah, 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 and you're the definitely the the DM kind of in Dungeon Keeper. You're like the overlord and. We're similar here, we're the guild master. And we never really made an in-game reason for why you're building the dungeon. We just kind of gloss over that, so it's hard to explain. Um, but that is what you do. Um, Just Die has a question. What made you want to update the game? Um, we we um, always wanted to, but we were... We moved on to other projects. We made Cardpocalypse from 2017 through to... 2020 really um, and that ate up all our time we're a small studio um, we always wanted to do more with Gilded Engineering and it's kind of well as we're looking about you know what will be our next project after Cardpocalypse we were thinking about well what if we went back and did more more Guild we were thinking about Gilded Engineering 2 like a full on sequel and we decided to do this remaster as a kind of stepping stone towards that um, this is also the first time we're self-publishing so it's kind of an experiment in, can we do this all ourselves? Can we build it, promote it, and launch it ourselves? And is there any demand? Does anyone care that we make new guild, you know, some new Gilded Engineering content? This is kind of a way to test the waters for us. And if, if this is a successful launch for us, then sure, we'll, we'll think much more seriously about Gilded Engineering too. So it's taken us a bit over a year to, to, to build this remaster. Um, and compared to most original games we've made which would take two or three years that's a much 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 quicker for us so it's been a good way for us to to build something and see you know is there demand for for more more guild i hope so um we are looking at the customize your dungeoneer um kind of page this is quite new in ultimate we've added a lot of customization options this this change by itself I love. Um, so some people will want to go and, you know, play with all the cool new hairstyles. Um, some people, like me, will probably just enjoy the new variety to to your Dungeoneers. So because there's so many more options we've added in Ultimate Edition, there's way more, you just naturally get, that's actually for the classic Dungeoneer hairstyle from one of our earliest demos. But I really love the variety we get here. Okay. That's that. The... This is your first engineer, the chump. So there's a mini little tutorial here just kind of explaining what you can do in this. This is the guild, um, guild part of the game. And the thing you do over and over is go on adventures. Not directly, of course. You send out your chumps or whatever dungeoneer you want. But you pick your dungeoneer and which um, adventure you get to go. The fir first adventure here is Rats, How Original. Um, so this is our little joke about D&D. &D. There's a lot of, lot of classic RPGs. Um, when the first thing you're sent to do is to kill some level one rats. So we do the same thing. I remember the Baldur's Gate basement of the tavern quest. Yep, down into the basement to kill the rats, right? Yeah, beginning of the Baldur's Gate one. Yep. Because in in D and D, it's one of the easiest monsters, rats. So, and they would be in a basement of kind of a safe area. You don't have to go out into the wilderness. 
Yeah, that's a classic one. I, I remember running a, a D&D third edition campaign, and I thought, oh, for the first session, we're gonna, I'm gonna have the level one players fight eight rats. <laughs> eight rats kicked their <laughs> eyes. With too many rats. And, and the, all the players were uh, demotivated, like, what? I can't, we can't even fight rats here, what's going on here? In fairness, in real life, if I was up against eight rats, that would be a bit freaky. I wouldn't like it. But like a barbarian and a whiz. <laughs> yeah, they should be able. <laughs> You really dispel their ideas of... Hopefully they leveled up then, and then later when they were level three, they came back and killed some rats without they even thinking about it. They didn't want to be a <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I blame the DM, Angelo. I blame the books. <laughs> Mine, Colgen, when building the remaster, did you lay the foundations for building Guild 2? I mean, in a way. So we've rebuilt this entirely in Unity, um, rather than our old engine. I mean, in Flash, it's not really an engine. Um, so yeah, we have, we definitely have a bit of structure built. If we were to make Guild 2, we would reuse some of what we've created here for, for the remaster. Um, and you know, we've done some stuff from the, with this remaster that we never got to in the original but we knew are, is important so for example we have controller support from well, right here in the demo you can play with controller which we never had for guild classic um we've built with uh, localization in mind we're still figuring out if we're going to translate it but it's now possible to to change all the text in guild classic there was loads of text that was actually um you know art like baked into art which means you can't swap it out at runtime you can't change the language and um, so it was just such a huge task if we ever wanted to to you know let alone translate it but be able to show the translated text in in game so now we've built that in from from the beginning um so there's a lot of things like that we've done as we built it and some of that is because we learned how to do this doing cardpocalypse which was built in unity and supports 15 languages okay i'm going to jump into the dungeon angelo yeah it's worth saying that devs get better while they're working it's true yep um, we've so had that, that's that guild got better. We got better at making games. Yep. So we're a small team, five, six people right now. Um, five to seven people finished Cardpocalypse. Um, so I'm counting, you know, contractors, people who drop in for a few months, and five full-time people. And we've had this. We have the same team who built Cardpocalypse working with us right now, including you, Angelo, um, making Ultimate Edition. Um, so Angelo's our game designer, was the lead game designer on Cardpocalypse, and is the lead game designer on the Ultimate Remaster. Will we play your tutorial? I think so. So yep. this is new. Guild Classic dropped you in, said, good luck fighting the rubber ducky, and that was that. Um, we never built a tutorial. We didn't, you know, we had to, we had to make a lot of compromises to launch Guild on time, and no tutorial was one of them. This time we made a tutorial. I think it's going to help people a lot. So, it's quite straightforward. Mind Crawler says rats are cute in real life. <laughs> Do you have a pet pet rat? I I'm imagine sorry, we, we will have to fight rats this time. Yeah, yeah, we're we're here to kill some rats. I imagine the rats you fight in D and D and in Dungeoneering are not the same kind of rats that people have as pets. Um, so I will speed through some of this um, tutorial. We might even break the tutorial. What you can see here is just a step-by-step -step introduction to Dungeoneering. We go through various things, we bring you through several fights, we teach you how loot works, how battles work, how placing works, how your hero moves. So We're showing here that the zombies level 2 monster but you're only still at level one, so it's not a great idea to go do that fight. Uh, place another room. So the suggestion here is to put in a rat. Now look, our rats are called nasty rats. So yeah, they're much worse than the usual. And then we're showing you that the dungeon is still like trying to go for this zombie, and it's because of this pile of treasure here. So then if we put more treasure in over the rat, then that's enough to to lure your hero over. Uh -huh. In the past, players would be able to figure this out more or less because it's kind of intuitive. Yeah, exactly. 
I mean, and that was our approach in the original guild, was just drop you in and good luck, you can figure it out. We did see people missed important things though, and we'll get to that in this tutorial. Um, you can figure out a lot, but there's a couple things, like, like exactly what we just showed, you could figure it out in time, but you definitely spend a lot longer, kind of a bit lost about how exactly the hero moves. And if you just pay attention for those two minutes there, you know, we've just shown you what what kind of things pull the, the dungeoneer around and that how you can, um, you know, change that. And then just armed with that little bit of knowledge, I think the experimentation of placing things down is going to go quicker. You know, the learning experience will go quicker. So in combat, it's um, a deck builder, which means your deck comes from somewhere. So in this case, you start with six cards that are to do with your class. The chump has six specific cards. And then you gain cards in this kind of, in each quest by beating monsters and choosing loot. And loot gives you different skill levels and the skill levels have certain cards associated with them. So let's beat this rat and see what I mean by that. And it's quite a simple battle system. There's two types of damage, physical and magic. You can block them. You can have special cards that make you discard, draw, things like that. Um, the chump starts with some very basic cards and Angelo has created the tutorial to very specifically give you certain cards at a certain time. So all we can do here is play one of these cards. So we're kind of trading damage. Monsters attack first in Gilded Engineering, unless you have a special uh, quick attack, which can be very useful. And your health resets after every battle. So all you have to do is win. Um, and it can be it can be kind of fine to trade blows as long as you have one health, you're fine. You're you always reheal at the end of each battle. How do you like writing tutorials, Angelo? Because I have a background in making board games, it was kind of um, very similar. Not exactly the same, but they're both. Um, a bit like programming a computer, you know, uh, you uh, program your brain to understand concepts and to understand how they're connected. It's easier for computers, uh, for computer games rather than board games because in board games rules aren't enforced. If a player doesn't move a piece or doesn't pick up a coin, it doesn't happen. And we talk about that bit actually, you know, in our kind of design meetings, you know, do we need to explain this? And sometimes I push for, no, it's okay. So things like, um, you know, if kind of like the, if this thing hits and decay triggers, you know, that's, that's kind of strange. Um, you know, it's, it's weird that it works that way. And in a computer game, we can say it's okay because you'll learn it. The computer enforces the rules and then the player goes, oh, it works that way. Okay. And as long as it's consistent, it's okay to kind of, you don't have to explain that that's going to happen because you can see it and discover it and that's fine. If this was a board game, yes, we'd have to explain those. You see this in board games a lot, FAQs, they'll be like, okay, with that certain card and this certain card, this is what should happen. They have to kind of explain every possibility. That's one way it's a bit easier. Mm -hmm. At the same time, uh, we need to understand that there are generally two types of players. There are players who think the tutorial is part of the game and they are enjoying learning and absorbing information and there are players whose fun is blocked by the tutorial like yes. why is this tutorial here i want to quickly go through it to actually go start playing the game so we've made the whole tutorial skippable as soon as like there's like three or four steps in the guild and then as soon as you arrive here in the in the first dungeon you can just skip the tutorial and figure things out yourself maybe you've played guild before you don't need the tutorial that's fine or like you said, you're a player who doesn't want tutorials. You just want to play and see. That's totally fine. And we've worked pretty hard to keep the tutorial as short as possible. I mean, we're, we're stopping here to chat a lot, but you can play through the whole tutorial, what, in about 10 minutes? Less from what I've counted. And the tutorial gives you some freedom halfway as well. Yeah. Yeah, you're definitely on rails here. Okay, so this is the loot screen. So after you beat a monster, we just beat a level one rat, you're given three pieces of loot that are level one, chosen at random. And these are things your character can equip, um, and if you want, you can skip 
those three and just take treasure, which means you don't equip anything. But it's it's very important to to equip your character because this is tied into the deck building. So if we look at straight jacket, all this one does is give you plus health. Okay, so that's an extra heart while you have that straight jacket. That makes a big difference. Uh, the fork gives you a skill, plus one to your blade skill. If you look at the card over here, um, this is the blade one skill. So you can start combining different items that have blade, and we talk about that in a while, um, to get consecutively higher skill levels that give you better cards. Okay, and the last item is the pigeon nest, which adds growth, a different skill. Um, so blade has kind of a physical attacks, growth has magical attacks and a lot of healing. Okay, so we're taking the pigeon nest. And one nice thing I like is that your characters actually wear the loot they're given. I've seen so many reactions to that when they see, oh, my character is wearing that stupid hat. Oh, he's holding that fork. Yeah, and you already saw there, there was a fork, you know, a pigeon nest. Um, we don't take things too seriously. The items and things like that, they're all, uh -oh. all a bit silly. Um, interestingly... I'd say there are plenty of serious games out there. Yes, yeah, yeah there is. Sometimes you want to play something a bit more relaxing. Yeah, and we, yeah, we're definitely on the silly side, silly side of the spectrum with uh, Guild of Dungeoneering, massively so. Um, it does mean it's easy to make stuff because we don't have to 100% fit to lore and logic. You know, we can make more silly things. Um, in Ultimate Edition, we add a lot of hairstyles. There's a lot of different size and shape hairstyles so we have to actually go back and for every equipable item in the game but especially hats we had to build a tool that let us kind of perch them in different ways for different hairstyles so this uh pigeon nest is positioned differently depending on your hairstyle so that's new in ultimate edition to kind of um go with these changes we made okay we're gonna go fight this zombie i think ellen is shouting Embrace the natural silliness. Embrace the natural silliness. So Ellen's the writer on our team, writing for Cardpocalypse, writing for the Ultimate Edition, and doing some additional programming for Ultimate Edition as well. Hey. So worth saying that what we're playing right now is the demo of Ultimate Edition. This is available right now on Steam. So um, it's here on this very page we're broadcasting on. You can just scroll down and install the demo yourself and give it a go. There's a couple of hours of playing. Yep, yep. It's basically the first few hours of Ultimate Edition. So it's a good test. All the, all the skills, all the new changes we made, they're all in there. Okay, the zombie, level two. So often, um, as I've been playtesting this, I've been skipping the tutorial and dying to this zombie. I've done it a few times. But the tutorial makes sure you get the cards that gets you through this fight. I've gone through it and I didn't die to zombie. Ever? Your time, your yeah, time will come. Okay, so here's the first magic. Bit of magic damage. But we can bypass their physical block with this magical attack. And we also heal ourselves. So I remember um, launch day for Gilded Engineering in 2015. There were no animations. Um, these n None of these uh, little battle icons were animated. It would just, you choose your card and then the effects would happen. It was very hard to follow. Like, quite apart from it being a bit plain those little animations really help you see oh why did that get through oh oh no no i did block that or oh they did block me so just seeing this you know even that they attack first you know that that extra damage came out of decay oh what's decay oh, taking two damage in one turn causes one extra damage okay so it's it's really helps players learn the battle kind of system that we added those animations i think we added them about a week or two weeks after launch it was just one of those things we couldn't get everything in that we wanted to. Okay, another monster down. Okay, so now we've killed a level two monster. We're gonna see some level two loot. So this is better loot. Okay, the anchor. 
gives us two levels of crush, which gives us crush one and crush two. So they, they're increasingly good cards as you get into the, there's four levels of, uh, of skill cards. So crush one, two, three, and four. Um, the balaclava. So this is a good one. Gives you swift two and the tenacious trait, which means you can't die unless you were at one health already. So if you ran two health and they hit you for five damage, you just go down to one health. You kind of stop there and maybe they'll kill you next turn, but they didn't kill you that turn. And then you can do all kinds of shenanigans with that if you can heal back up, heal back up to two and it's it's gonna be it's gonna be active again. So that's a good one. But it would be instead of our pigeon nest. It's worth saying here that this um, UI for the loot screen has been improved a whole lot. Yes. So if anyone okay, remembers classic. classic, it showed just the cards you gained. So just these cards here and the cards you lost. So we've added all these things. I think I found a bug there where the the yellow snow cone disappeared. It might be tied to the tutorial. But um, basically we show the item you're gaining, the item you're replacing. Um, spell out that it's adding these traits and skills and which ones you're losing and i think we've gone through a few iterations of this in developing ultimate edition and i think this is really going to help because you see this a lot and this is like definitely a recurring step probably the funnest step of the like general loop of gilded engineering is this loot screen and pouring over you know okay which of these will i take what am i losing what am i gaining trying to make the perfect kind of deck in each run because each run your your hero starts Starts over in each run. It's kind of like a roguelike thing. Um, this is kind of the part in the tutorial where we explain about stacking skill levels. So here, we're t if we take this yellow snow cone, it gives you plus one growth, but we already have growth from our pigeon nest. So this will unlock this growth two card, which is even better, better magic attack and healing. So that's where we're talking about stacking skills. And it's a really key, um, really key part of getting good at Gilded Engineering is understanding that you can get growth one on your hat, growth one on your um, offhand, that's what we're going to do, and together they give you growth one card and the growth two card. And if you get a third one or an item with another two growth, you get growth three and growth four where they start getting really, really good. Once you start, once you kind of get that, then this loop of, of picking loot becomes really interesting. Okay, pick whatever we want. We get to this is where we've finally gotten some player choice, huh? What we go for, Angelo? Um, got the balaclava. What, what play style? Do you want to go? Uh, Slow and healing? Beat yeah. The other phase? I think we should go with the, the healing. Or quick. We go for healing? Whatever you like. Okay, I'm in charge. Hey, yeah. Sylvan. Hey, Sylvan. Oh, we gain favor. So favor is a... This might be behind my face uh, on the stream. But favor is a thing we added in the second expansion for Gilded Engineering, the Ice Cream Headaches expansion. And we basically went back and made sure that it was more prominent and used kind of better throughout the whole game as we remade Ultimate Edition. So we've added a couple of new uses. It used to be that it had three uses. One was uh, useful in the dungeon and two were useful in battle. Now we've got three different uses in the dungeon and three different uses in battle. Um, so you can you gain favor by fighting on particular um, rooms you put down with a, a favor of the fates rune on it. If you beat a monster there you gain one favor and then you spend it whenever you want. So it, it can kind of help you out. This was kind of the idea was sometimes you know, you've only got three cards in hand. Sometimes it feels like there's only one good choice. And the ad addition of favor there was to kind of give extra options. Okay. This is where we're by ourselves, right? We go kill this yep. rat man. Tutorial is over. Okay. That's the end of the hmm. tutorial. Um, let's go win demo. Oh, there's one last thing. You just hit me with an extra bit of tutorial. One last thing, you can spend favor in battle. So this is the three things you can do a favor. You can draw an extra card for one favor. If you have two, you can add a block. And number three, which is very good, you can discard the current card. So some of their cards are very, very spiky. Um, you know, like 
here's one attack, their next card could be like a three or four attack, especially against the bosses. Okay. Moving that favor menu down there has been such a good UI improvement. Yeah, so we saw this all the time. Even us creators of the game would lose a battle in Guild Classic with favor unspent. So you tend to accrue favor, sometimes you're not really trying, but you'll get one or two favor without even realizing. It was always up here in the top right, um, even in battle, and you go, oh, I'm dead, there's nothing I can do here, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, and you just play and lose. I do that all the time. Now we're, we're, we're kind of just putting it front and center, this favor is available. And I think that helps a lot. So when you're looking around for, oh god, none of these cards are going to save me, you can go down here and draw one, I'll do one now. And that actually is quite helpful here. I've drawn a cower and I can block their attack that would have made me discard. Yeah, um, a lot of uh, the criticism of the game is that it, it is a bit too much RNG. Yes. Too much, too, too random. Uh, to an extent, randomness is a taste. Some people might like high randomness, some people might not like high randomness. However, with a favor system, the improved favor system where there's more favor to grab and you, there's more things for you to do with a favor, when RNG is bad for you, you can still recover with smart play. Yes. Um, it's also a thing where if you're losing, any randomness feels like it's stacked against you. If you're winning, you don't think of yourself as lucky usually. This is just a normal trait of human people, you know, of psychology, that you will start to look for factors to blame if you're losing something. So luck is a, is a real easy one, um, but not realize that luck is in your favor in other times. I mean, this, is, this happens with like gambling, for example. Um, so we, we do try and offset that a bit. It's still a card game. You're still shuffling up cards and drawing them. That's kind of the randomness here, or the main randomness. Um, but there's lots of level of randomness, like the, the cards you're offered here in the screen. They're picked at random too. Um, it does keep things from going stale, right? That's where we like randomness in like board games and this kind of computer game. Um, the entire rogue roguelike genre is based on randomness, changing things up in each run, seeing what you get, and adapting your kind of planned playstyle to something slightly different based on some cool thing you found. That's definitely randomness. One. Yeah, yeah. Randomness provides surprise. Without any randomness on a single player game, you can't really have surprise. Yeah. I mean, if you, you can could... plan all the way to twenty rounds down. It becomes a solvable problem. Yep. Yeah. Um, I don't like any of my choices here, but um, I'll swap to the wooden stool just so we get some physical blocks it's, you know, the uh, current ui is helping a lot more understand yeah it really is it. it's helping us as well so let's ah. just finish this mission by killing this rat man you can do it Cole. i believe in me you did waste your favor on i wasted my favor playing poorly drawn my stupidity card so uh, some some things you get, this is from the stool, but it was also from the snow cone, add a, a useless card to your deck, a dead card. So now I'm forced with a bad play here, so I'm using my bash, but it won't block their unblockable attack. So, oh well. That's something I might have gotten around with favor if I had saved it. But I'm not worried. We're okay here. Um, so we can finish him off and take two damage. And that's the mission one. Ready for some uh, more bard song? Oh no! I didn't realize. This isn't meant to pop up. <laughs> there we I go. I suppose you've done Here's fine a for a little green rookie, but it's only a matter of time. Till you get your comeuppance, let's just say you've been lucky. But it's only a matter of time. Well, that's good coincidence. That's one of the new songs. So we went back and rehired our bard and got the bard to sing some new songs for us um, so there's um i think 50 percent more uh victory and loss songs i think we went from 10 to 15 of each so that should you know give it a little more variety since you do hear them a lot 
and we made some new ones for the new classes as well. Uh, there's a question from Bullfrog on the chat. Probably Bullfrog from Discord, who's very active. Hi, Bullfrog. Hi, Bullfrog. Uh, uh, the question is, what inspired you to make the skill stacking system? You can probably show us the Gilpidia. Yeah, that's a good idea. This is something we added in Ultimate, kind of to, to help with the kind of what collectability of these things. So it starts showing you the cards you've as long as you've ever kind of gained them on a run. So we had Crush, we had that. We should see two levels of growth. Ah, uh, it's a bug. We definitely had growth two. We just didn't finish with growth two. I'd say that's what's happened there. It's only checked at the end of the mission. So there's four levels of growth. Um, once we get a few more of these, and then five levels of stupidity. They're all the same though. And then we started a thing where you can start kind of seeing all the monsters you fought. So there's the zombie. You can see their their whole deck. So back to the question, what inspired you to make the skill stacking system? Hmm. I can't remember. It was so we had we had the idea of um loot gives you cards. So like loot gives you skills as a kind of step towards giving you cards. And it just felt like a nice I can't remember why, where it came from just felt like a nice way to encourage you to have some sort of tactical thinking around your four slots. You, you want to make them kind of have some synergies and some synergies with your, your hero. Um, I can't remember why, but it certainly worked really well as soon as we started thinking about it. It's been quite hard to teach players, particularly in Guild Classic. The That's probably the number one stumbling point I've ever you know seen when we ask players or if we watch people streaming. Is that they're in in that loot screen just kind of picking going yeah that looks like fun mm. but in guild classic definitely the assumption is um you know oh i'm picking this pigeon nest and it's giving me that specific card even though that's not totally true it's giving you plus one to a skill level so yes if it's your very first pick it's giving you that card but if it's a later pick and you already have other items giving you growth it'll unlock it hey. you know a level two three or four card it's different um, so that has been a big challenge in Classic. I'm hoping Ultimate helps between the tutorial and that improved kind of loot um, UI. Yeah, um, as we've been saying lately, items give you skills, which give you cards. Yeah, game. yeah. We talked about because this a lot. They, because all of them look like cards, it's a bit confusing. Yeah. We talked about this a lot. I think if we make Guild 2, we'll, we'll kind of design this in in a better way in your character sheet have some way of showing you the levels of each skill and that you're actually increasing them um, I think that would be a way to help hey. and then th you could use that to kind of preview which cards you could get to and we've got a question here from Roely the bard songs are beautiful but sometimes hard to understand for non-native speakers Angelo you're from Greece that's correct you've it's definitely you've definitely hit this Roely I've been lobbying for this for a while now. yeah so we agree mm. It would be good to have subtitles for all the songs, even in you know even English subtitles would help a lot with understanding lyrics of songs. Um, I'm not sure it's going to make it. I don't think it's going to make it for ultimate launch. You never know, but just the way we're 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 looking at the moment, we're aiming for November. Hey. Um, but it's definitely on our to-do list. So I hope soon after. Um, we've never done subtitles. So we just have to figure out how to present them and let, you know how to make it work properly and an ex extra little problem there is we often have music playing while you're doing or lyrics you know songs happening while you're doing uh -huh. other stuff so we have to kind of figure out how, how to show yeah. that and or still let you continue text yeah. yeah it's a uh, problem to solve yeah but it's a really good idea i mean what? i am a native speaker but i almost always turn subtitles on on voice games it's just lets me kind of read in here or look at other things and then mm. see it. I find it far easier. Okay, so we have a, a second mission to beat here. So the way we kind of set this up you and should, you'll... You should expand your deal first. Oh yeah. You spend your gold. So we have 65 gold to spend. So your guild, we talked about this before, is the thing you upgrade. So we've piled it into three piles. You can have uh, new, new items that you will find in dungeons, so better items in general. Uh, that's these four and then we have four different classes we've kind of split them between might and magic and four different blessings so a blessing 
is something that will help you out in the mission. So this will give you plus health for the first two fights. And actually, the first two fights are usually the hardest ones. It's actually pretty good. And key to the whole game is new types of Dungeoneer. Oops. So kind of in tier one, we can have the Mime, the Apprentice, the Bruiser, and the Cat Burglar. I'm going to go for the Cat Burglar for some cat puns. Steel Rose, the interface looks really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, and it's really standout. So I've often thought this about Gilded Engineering. You can have, I like his little mustache. Angelo, look who's come up. Uh -huh. Angelo the Cat Burglar. I think when we build it, we're going to get a new randomized name, though. I promise in life I'm not a Cat Burglar. Hmm, suspicious. Okay. There's something I really like about the interface because it's, the, it's very light for the eye. It's easy for the eyes because it's the black and white uh, color palette. And very it's low very, colors. Yeah. Yeah. It's so not I was I was about to say it's really easy to pick out guild and engineering. If you had like a wall of screenshots of games on Steam, you could pick out guild pretty quick. Helps it stand out a little. New song. Until now, we've all had some fun, and you could say you've come very far, but brace yourself for some woeful cat puns. Now that we have a cat burglar. Meow. <laughs> the meow is from the bard, not from me. Okay. You are though. Madam. Okay. Charlie the cat burglar. It's a little mohawk. So you can you can fully rename these. You can we can we can put Angelo in. Angelo, you're going in as a cat burglar. Oh no! So this is really fun for streaming. Um, you get to you know name your name your heroes after your viewers, and if things go wrong, which they invariably tend to, you get to unlock the graveyard, and that's again a good place to go if you if you what what went wrong. Um, so we can take our cat burglar out on the second mission. Actually, I didn't really examine the cat burglar more carefully. The cat burglar has a, their own set of six cards. So each class has their cards they start with and often a special trait. So the chump has no special trait. The cat burglar has covetous. Plus one loot choice slot, that is, plus one level. So you'll see this in action very quickly. Instead of choosing from three items, the cat burglar chooses from four, and the fourth one is a higher level than normal. So and your very first fight, you'll be offered one level two item, which is could be really strong. Um, downsides is they start with no blocks, right? That, yes, you. When monsters play cards that have a negative effect to you unless you block them, you're gonna. Take a, that negative effect. a lot of the early game, there's things like do one damage, and if it's successful, heal heal themselves, or if it's successful, you your hero discards a card. That's pretty frustrating, and without any equipment, the cat burglar is totally uh, kind of stuck. So we made one change in Ultimate Edition to the cat burglar, and that's to buff them slightly. These catnip cards use not heal. They used just do plus to next damage. And it just, it was a bit too weak, I thought, the cat burglar. They really need this. Do you think this is enough? Uh, we also slightly buffed their trait. They used to have that plus one level bit. And the uh, adding healing on a card that's called catnip is very thematic. Yeah, yeah. That you, the cat burglar, eating catnip. I guess so. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, having a card that gives you two damage and a card that gives you one damage later is, is a big, big difference. And this plus, like, plus to your next physical attack combos really well with scratch, which is a quick attack. We'll we'll see that in action here. But basically, you can stay alive, stay alive, stay alive pile up a bunch of next attack and then kill them in one go with the quick attack before they get to hit you with maybe a really big hit that would have finished you off. Okay, let's go exploring. Mm -hmm. Steel Rose says, the puns in this game are poor. Perfect. <laughs> so I fought really hard in 2014, 2015 to have all the ridiculous cat burglar puns. I can't believe you sometimes. You're making me catty. So the cat burglar, I think every single line has a cat pun in it, and it's over the top, really, really annoying, but totally avoidable. If you hate cat puns, don't use the cat burglar. No problem. 
So, this is a boss fight. We have the Rat King to, to defeat. Um, so they are a little tougher than usual um, minion, and it, you do well to level up as much as possible and get loot um, to be ready to fight them. And they also have this trait that they get extra hearts for each surrounding minion, so watch out, don't, don't stack or else kill off the people that are around them. And we also need to build the dungeon up to, to reach that point. Right now there's no route, there's no way to get through. So we can build, we can kind of build ahead to plan our, our route. Forward to victory. Okay, so here's a great use of catnip already. Um, if they're hitting you with an unblockable attack, it doesn't matter that you don't have blocks. So we've come out ahead there because we've kind of banked this, this damage and now we can unleash it. A good way to judge what how valuable a cat is is to see what difference it makes on health, whether it goes up or down. On it. Yeah. So I mean, gives you plus one to you, minus one to the other, to the monster. So it's a two effect. Yeah, it's as valuable as this throw cat, which is quite valuable. The the chump class just has one out of their six cards that kind of has it worth two. The cat burglar essentially has four out of six. But that's yeah, not to say they're they're the best class. They're still they still need equipment because you, you need to have blocks. Something that isn't very clear is that Champ is not a good class. Yeah, yeah. And w on my first playthrough, I didn't know that. And You're trying I, to you, trying to make the Champ work. Oh yes, I played way too many Champs. Yeah. And so once the... we talked together and you talked to me strategy, you were like, oh, right. Oops. So we, we tried to make that clear in some ways. Um, he has no trait. Uh, I think now in Ultimate Edition, all four of the other ones have a trait. Um, he's called the Chump. You got him for free. But, you know, we, we've got another thing. Um, we've got a nice catch-up mechanic in Ultimate Edition. We've added the Gravedigger class, who you get by losing. So when you lose your first Engineer you get to unlock the graveyard and that now in ultimate edition gives you this new class the gravedigger who's kind of like a catch-up class because he's really good he's good for the low tier uh, areas so that's our way of kind of helping out players naturally who aren't doing so well is to give the like you unlock it by losing if you are just perfect you will never see the gravedigger um it's pretty rare though it's it's easy to to lose in guild of dungeoneering in Discord, uh, uh, plenty of people were telling us that they have uh, uh, perfect runs. Yeah, of the demo. A few people have been yeah. mm -hmm. trying, say, the Cat Burglar and playing them all the way through the demo without dying. So here is the Cat Burglar's other trait. Every time you get loot, one, two, three normal things and one level two thing. So <laughs> this one is maybe good and bad. Gives us loads of extra health. We get to draw a card if we have favor. We have none right now but fills your deck with two bad cards. So that's a bit risky. But let's go for it, because it looks hilarious. Don't know if you noticed I buffed it recently. What did it, what did it used to do? Uh, it, didn't, uh, it didn't have a Fate Charge. OK, yeah. So Fate Charge is a nice, since we changed Fate Charge, it used to work differently. Fate Charge is um, kind of a nice little buff. It's a good thing to add to items like that, where you think they need a little something. I'm going to put this room up here just so we have a route to the boss now. Um, I'll put this down even though we're probably not going to go there just to show fountains. So this is a, a room with a fountain in it. When you place a room with a fountain, it's random whether it's good or bad. So this one's bad. After you clear this room, you will have this fountain effect for your next fight. So in this case, you'll get decay, which is bad. So we want to avoid our hero going in there. Um, or if we can't avoid it, we want to make sure they fight a pretty easy monster afterwards because that will kind of reset it. There is a question in the chat. Um, since you've made cards that have you discard recycled cards of your choice, will you have enemy card recycle steel cards let you choose the card to be affected to make things less random depend? We we haven't made that change. So at the moment any of their kind of effects that force you to discard, it's at random. Um I'm pretty sure we don't have the UI for that. 
I mean, if we, if we yeah, we, we could we could build something that let you pick on your cards to discard. Yeah, first and of all, we would need a UI. That would be a nice and, use for stupidity cards. Yeah, and secondly, it adds a decision point which slows down the game. Sure. It, in general, you want to take away decisions that aren't as meaningful from the player and give them more time. That gives them more time to spend time on important decisions. So for a, a game of this size and this uh, uh, you know, uh, mentality, I'm OK with um, knowing that this thing is going to happen at random unless you block. Yeah. That's, that, that's where some player agency is. And we've if, become very consistent about it. So all our discard effects that affect the player are random. So you always know that, that it may happen. And that's where things like this fate charged item we have a favor so that we always have four cards at the start. That helps. So it gets around stupidity, because we're drawing extra cards, and it gets around mm -hmm. discard effects, because we'll have more choices afterwards. It is true that there are a, a few monsters that force you to recycle. Yeah, yeah. There's a few that, that just recycle, which is you discard yeah. and redraw. But that's not as punishing an effect. Punish. Yeah. yeah. Well, discard and steal effects, They, uh, I think you can all you can block them all. So it's up to you. They are pretty grim. Okay, we're going to see a yeah. quick attack here. I mean, it won't matter because we have so much extra health. But okay. this... Also, to, to something more to the previous one. Now you can spend two favors to block one attack. Yes. You couldn't do that in the past. Now you have one more way to Yeah. So if, if you build up favor, so let's say you're in a boss fight, that's another way to, you know, I have no blocks whatsoever in my deck, but I could use favor to block an attack like this that does something key, like healing themselves or making me discard. Um, in this case, uh, I could win by doing throw cat and take the discard. The discard doesn't matter because we're going to end the battle, but I'm going to use scratch, which is this quick attack, and they'll never do their attack then. So even if this attack was doing 10 damage, we'd be able to win with this. Which is, it's definitely something you want to do with the cat burglar. Okay, so again, three level ones and a level two. So we could take off our male coif and put on the sparkly headband, which is a really good item, but probably we want to combo with something. So we can add a crush, we can add a swift. So I'm going to go for the swift here. So this is another nice quick attack that draws. Yeah, extra card draws in a deck that has stupidity is good. So we can make the Ratman harder for ourselves by giving him extra health. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh, is it right? So I've buffed up the Rat King's health there. He's going to have more health when we go and fight him. He's going to have one, two, three extra health. But now, just to get to him, we're going to kill one of them. I'm going to end turn here. Uh, you didn't get that favor, did you? Yeah, I, I didn't put a monster down. I don't. Maybe I had a monster and I forgot. We're going to be stuck you with the one the, favor. The rat man next to oh, yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> Okay, so this is a quick attack, great for finishing, but also a nice kind of early thing because you, you draw an extra card when you use it. So now we'll go up to five cards, widen your choice. And you, you always get one draw at the start of each turn. So this discard effect kind of doesn't matter that much that we can't block it because we'll just kind of power through it. So they discarded a good, a good quick attack, but it's okay. We still have lots of choices. So I'm just going to finish this here. And there's, even if you run out of cards, you, there's always one card to play. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so here's our first level three item. So this is again because that trait we're offered a three level twos and a level three. So I can swap out my rapier and get just a straight upgrade here, really. So I, they both have swift one. So that's that uh, quick attack with the draw card. And then I'll gain blade one and growth one. Uh, my other choices. This one might be a good one here, the hook. So this will let me start stacking skills at last. So it gives me blade one, which is slice, and then it gives me plus one to swift, which will get us to swift two, which is a really nice block, one of our first blocks. So let's go for that. So sometimes it makes sense to disregard the higher level items. You don't always need them. And swift three is really good. 
Yeah, yeah. The level three and the level four cards are really worth getting if you if you can kind of stack your item as well enough. And this is where we'll we'll do this probably after this battle, uh, after we beat the boss. That's where upgrading the loot items starts to give you kind of better options that have more opportunities to stack skills together. We'll talk about that when we go back to the guild. Yeah, actually, I did an interesting analysis the other day. I don't think I told you about. Um, I Secret analysis. Fa- what's, what's the maximum um, skill you can reach just with the starting uh, yeah. uh, equipment? And you can't reach level 4 at any. Aha, uh-huh. that's kind of cool. Any, so you, you must any. unlock loot before you can reach level 4. That was not by design, because surely, coincidentally, there could have been four items that had four, you know, four different slots. That gave you yeah. four of one skill. I'm surprised. Okay, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna win with stupidity here. I think most are two, but there are some skills you can get level three. Hmm. Well, that's kind of cool. That's a happy coincidence. Mm-hmm. So you must upgrade your guild before you start seeing the level fours. That's kind of nice. And um, so this ratman is gonna kill themselves to death with their headbutt. So that what that's that's an achievement in the main game. Play a stupidity card and still win the battle that turn. Uh, Guild Ultimate will have achievements, it's yep. just the demo doesn't have them right Yeah, now. yeah. So we're going to have achievements. Um, we're planning on having cloud saves because Steam has made it far easier to support than it was in 2015. Um, we haven't done it yet, but we're, that's our plan. Uh, people definitely ask for that one, which is fair enough. It's nice to be able to switch devices and keep, keep playing. Okay, this is a nice, nice trait, favorite. You gain favor just in every battle. But I'm only gonna have one more battle, so I don't know when I have one favor. Okay, can get Holy One and Arcane One. I don't wanna lose Swift Two. Same here. Well, you're thinking there is another question. From Bullfrog, similarly, freeze makes things more random, depend more randomness dependent by forcing you to play the top card of your deck most of the time. Perhaps make it freeze one or two random cards instead of all of them. Yeah, and it's kinda, it's definitely I a place like where it. I I kind of prefer conceal, you know, the kind of confuse effect. So and, that hides mm-hmm. some of your cards, but you still get to pick, and particularly the change we made to. It. To it in ultimate mode is, is super cool but yeah freeze is, you're just kind of forced to play what you have there are, there are two workarounds to freeze one is to play a card draw uh, attack before the freeze happens yes. so you know freeze is coming you'll draw one card and your usual card you'll have two to choose from yes and secondly you can spend one favor to draw a card you can see what the card is the, that you are forced to play if you don't like it you draw another one and it's true that this is a situation that um, players are in, in, are at a disadvantage and players might get negative feelings out of it. At the same time, you get positive feelings if you avoid it. Or if you find ways to work around it, you know, yes. use, using the you systems feel, we offer you. Yeah. you. You kind of feel clever. Players clever-er. can f- feel satisfied and feel smart if they find ways around for this. It, you kind of have to have some negative experiences for the player to appreciate the good experience, and for the player to get to get pleasure from avoiding them. Yeah, and to appreciate good plays. So, for example, um, in one of your first battles in guild, you'll probably be playing with the chump against a rat, and you might use your your block to just block a damage they do. But you're far better. No, you know, you get this from experience. A damage is fine because you know in their deck there's one that does damage and discards. That's the one you want to block. So sometimes once you learn the intricacies of the game it's the same with those freeze attacks they're all blockable if you can so if you've built up ways to block magic and you say you have the card and you save the card and then i think that feels good too i mean i i think of it as like debuffs in say an action rpg freeze is often used so you know you're frozen you can't move you can't dodge attacks and it can be bad but then it makes you work on ways to break it when you're frozen or ways to avoid it I'd like to mention here that also some things are player preferences. Some player might really hate freeze. I've seen other players, for example, really hate um, conceal. Well, or conf- what's it called? When, Con- when confusion. Uh, what, uh, confusion, yes. 
they say, oh, I'm confused. I don't remember what my cards do. <laughs> Some players hate it and avoid it. Some other players don't don't mind confuse at all because they remember. Uh, the good thing with guild is that if you know what the monsters do, you can avoid that a lot. Yeah. You can so avoid playing monsters that have these. If you're up, you know, that's usually in, in a later part of the game that we don't see in, in the demo. But yeah, if you're in the Pirate's Cove area, that's where a lot of the monsters have freeze, because that's where that was added. It was a DLC originally. Yeah, you just, you start to learn that it's those monsters and just don't place them then, you know? Place other monsters. We give the player a lot of strategic control there around what, what they're going to fight. Now, there's definitely missions where you they're pre-placed stuff or their bosses it can't be avoided. But then you have other strategic choice, which is which class do I bring to this mission? So this, you know, freezing boss is really annoying me. I'm going to bring... Actually, there's a lot of freeze and ice cream headaches as well, isn't there? Um, I'm going to bring, you know, this class that starts with a lot of magic block so that I can, from the beginning, have cards that will help me beat them. Okay, we're in the boss fight against the Rat King. Yeah, yeah let's do the boss fight, and then we can reply to another question. So I'm going to use my card draw straight away. I used favor there to draw an extra card, and I'm going to play a card that lets me draw an extra card, because I can't stop him making me discard. Oh, and he discarded my stupidity card, my worst card. So we're That's well nice. set up. We're all good. That's uh, an example of a negative feeling that becomes positive. Yeah. So when they make you discard a card, but it catches your stupidity cards, that's great. Mm, I guess I can push through this way. Let's see if we can do it, Colin. <sighs> nah, I'm feeling pressure. Okay, I think this will set us up for the win. Okay, so they're going to do two damage to me, but it's okay. We can win with either of our two quick attacks here. So that's the, this little icon says this attack is quick. Means if we kill them, they never attack. So there's some new interface. <laughs> it's funny that we have to choose loot here. You have finally beaten your foes. I offer my congratulations. But watching the way you trade blows, you've actually lowered my expectations. Oh dear. Yeah, good question there from Chat Sola. I like the rock, paper, scissors. I just wish there was more depth and variety in cards and playstyle. Right now, stacking one or two skills to high level is the best um, kind of strategy. It's true. Could there be more synergy for, between skills? Yeah, and that's something we were talking about. You know, should we re rebuild those systems now? And there was kind of a pile of ideas called Guild 2 ideas. So ideas that were too big to address in this remaster that we will look at if we ever get to make Guild 2. And that's definitely one of them. So yeah, it is fun picking synergies and making synergies. And it is a winning combination. If you pick any skill and get it to the higher highest skill levels in a given run, you're going to do quite well with it. And there is some strategy in, in picking the right one. So with a given class like the Cat Burglar, it could be good to go for quick because you have no way to block and quick attacks just go well with the next physicals you've got built in, the like self buffs. Or armor because that makes up for a big kind of hole, like a big weakness built into the character, get some blocks in. And same with holy, get you um, block anys. Um, so there is a little synergy in the strategy, but I, I would like to go further. And I think a place we're missing that we could do this is the equivalent. If you're playing like a traditional roguelike, um, you go in on a run saying, I'm going to do, I'm going to try for X. I'm going to try this certain build or I'm bringing this character, this barbarian or whatever. But then as soon as you start playing the, the randomness of the drops usually make you change your plans. And that's something I think we could do more of in Guild of Dungeoneering. So what I mean by that is in like halfway through your dungeon run, you find a unique drop that only comes up now and again, and it's very, very strong. And that makes you rethink your strategy. And so they, they, they'd be special items that don't work like other items. Maybe there's special ways of triggering them um, in, a, in, a, in a dungeon run. 
and they have such unique traits that they make you rethink your strategy. So you get that, you're like, whoa, I got that. It's there for the rest of this run. Now I'm gonna try and get other loot that synergizes with it because it's so powerful. And this is something good roguelike, roguelikes do all the time. Um, I think that's a guild two idea, definitely something I wanna investigate. What do you think, Angela? Uh, I think that um, the, everything you said is correct. A part of the original question that wasn't uh, covered, I think, is the sel loot selection time. If you see, oh, I'm getting the level three from this item, then I want to get that. And I don't I ignore the other options. That's true. And um, with, it's a tiny bit better nowadays with uh, the different traits, especially the favor traits could be could make you want to get a item that is not as good because it has an interesting trait. Yeah. And yeah. we have added we have added traits to existing items and we have made new items that have a lot of new traits. So how many items have we added to Ultimate Edition? I can look it up, but I it's think like it's 20 something, 20, right? 18. Yeah. So that's like 15% more items in and around that. Mm -hmm. So um, we've added a whole load of new items. So that'll kind of widen the, the choice pool for kind of things you can pick. They'll work in different ways. We're using new traits. We're using existing traits, but in new ways. So you did a lot of work on like analyzing guild classics, like kind of loot pool and the skills you were getting. And you found a few things were really underrepresented. So I think yes. Swift, for example, was quite hard to level up. Um, crash was the worst. For example, there, crash, was no okay. there was no helmet that gives you crash. So you only had to get the crash from three items. Yeah. So that was so just now, an oversight, yeah. I guess, when we, when we built the game. So now we made, I, I balanced off those uh, extremes. Yeah. So that was, we changed some items, but mostly with the new items, we we're filling in those gaps. Okay. We've, we've just beat a boss. Um, this is going to unlock some new missions, but this is we're talking about. This in the original game was called Scars, and we've rebuilt it. They're called Victory Traits now, but I mean, the effect is the same. As any given Dungeoneer wins quests, they start getting traits. Um, the old scar system was both positive and negative. And if you got a scar that was negative, if you kept playing, it would become positive. Like it would, they were meant to be largely positive or positive overall, but they came with drawbacks. And particularly the way we built it, so you'd get a scar that was negative. If you persevered, it could become positive, like strongly positive, but still have a negative. That was kind of not fun. Um, so instead we've built rebuilt that system and now the victory trait system that's always positive so it's nothing but positive gains i mean some of them have very slight um like neg negatives built into them but any given trait overall is positive um even if it has plus or minus within it and then we've done a really nice thing which we may or n may not get to show here but essentially you get if you win your first battle you'll get a victory trait at random you win a second battle you get a victory trait at random and then randomly in your third, fourth, or fifth battle, you will get an advanced victory trait. And that'll be the end of it. You won't get any more victory traits. But the advanced victory trait is t it's tied to one of those two victory traits you were given. So we're getting here sword fighter, which is plus one blade. Do you know offhand what the advanced sword fighter trait is? I can look it up in a second. I can't remember either. Um, so we're, we're gonna get a, you know, this character, Angelo the Cat Burglar, has permanently got Sword Fighter. Because every time you go on a mission, all your loot and level is reset. So you always start with just your six cards, but now this Angelo is a Sword Fighter and always has Blade plus one. So it's gonna be pretty cool there to pick in your first or second you know, loot choices Blade, because that will stack with that built-in Blade one, and you'll get to those higher level cards quicker. We'll try that in it's our next mission. advanced version is called Gladiator. It has the negative of minus one health, but the bigger positive to start with Tenacious. Okay, very strong. So Tenacious is the trait where you can't die unless you are at one health at the start of your turn. So minus one health is pretty nasty given the like small health you have at the start of the game, but Tenacious is a super trait. 
So the way this will work is if we keep adventuring with Angelo the Cat Burglar, they're a sword fighter now and they're going to get one other random trait in their next win. And then after that, you'll get the follow on, the advanced follow on trait for one of those two. So you'll either get Gladiator or the follow on trait for whichever other um, victory trait we would get. So to me, this has really changed kind of progression of characters, made it more interesting, made it much more interesting kind of what super combo you'll get on a certain character. And sometimes you get a really, really good kind of synergy between the class itself and the traits you get. And that feels great. I think it's a huge improvement over Scars. It also uh, creates um, variety. Uh, one cat burglar will be different from another cat burglar because the likelihood of the same advanced and common uh, victor traits is very low. It, 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 and this can push you to a different place. Now. On one, on one uh, cat burglar, you might go for blade. On another one, you might go for holy. Yeah. Based on how. Yeah. And that kind of speaks to uh, what that question that came up a little while ago, which was, oh, just go for the best possible, you know, stackable skills. When you start bringing out these advanced traits, you'll you'll go in with a, you know, a thing you want to do. So right now we have this character, Angela, is going to start with Blade 1. I'm going to try and stack them up with Blade on this next mission. Um, let's, let's buy some new loot. So we have uh, four different unlocks here that each give different a whole different pile of loot um will we find one with blade one? let's find one yeah, with blade maybe. so there's no blade there in the curio shop presumably in the blacksmith there is a blade 2 guy that would be good there's blade on there, the mace yeah. there are some comments about how in classic uh, guild people would be confused when they got a minus one health as a as a you know, as a scar. Uh, I've seen it with playtesters like on the first, at the end of the first dungeon, the first dungeoneer had minus one health. It was pretty confusing. Mm -hmm. uh, though, in fairness, and, and kind of crippling. Not all of them, not all of them were this fancy. There were others that were positive. But when the negative happens, it was really difficult. So, yeah, I think this is a positive move. You're your characters tend to get better with the the advanced traits. It feels better. Um, but we have designed the game that it's not a necessary thing. So you, you don't need to have, you know, maxed out characters to get through the content. Definitely not. Mm -hmm. This is a nice new little pop-up for an Ultimate Edition. After you place the room that gives you upgraded um, cards, this was a question people would often have. It's like, oh, I just, I just bought those loot, you know, those new pieces of loot. Where are they? So we're trying to address that here, that these are added to loot choices in your next dungeon run. So they're, they'll turn up in dungeons from now on. And that's not obvious, because you don't, you know, where do I get equipment? Well, here in the Guild of Dungeoneering, we send people into dungeons with no equipment. That's how we roll. What's this? There's more, a whole world to explore. Uh, Rowley was asking, we were saying that uh, they noticed uh, we changed a new tag with an exclamation sign. It's so I think we see. did that for localization. You're not so we don't need to translate our world. Yeah. And it might end up having 10 letters. Yeah. In the little new little sign was a little piece of art that would be hard to localize. That's one good reason. And the exclamation point kind of does the job. We've all been trained by mobile phones for those little badges. Um, okay, we have three new missions. They're multi step missions, they end in a boss. I want to bring us to Embro. So Embro, this third quest of... Oh, that's the wrong one. Embro's over here. Embro here is the bath bomb quest in this. And I have a soft spot for Embro because for the longest time in development of Guilds of Engineering, you could play basically a demo, the latest build. And all it was was this quest three here. It was this this quest with Embro the Fire Lord as the boss. There was no, there was no guild. There were no classes for the longest time. But anyway, that was the demo. So I've always liked it. Um... Which is the new mission here in um, Ultimate Edition, one or two? I, I would have to double check, but I think it's the second one. Okay, we'll find out now. It's the second one, okay. So there is a nice little nod for... Um, uh, no, no, all, all those three exist. 
Yeah, but there's we'll, a but we'll change, change to the, number two. Second one a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So um, in Guild Classic, the first thing you do is the first quest you arrive instead of a tutorial is you fight the rubber ducky ah. tutorial monster and you never see them again. And now that we've built a proper tutorial with proper monsters, there's no rubber ducky in the start of Ultimate Edition. So we found a good spot, which is here in this bath themed um, adventure. So in the second adventure, which we should get to shortly. Okay, let's try and get a blade, some sort of plus blade loot from beating this goblin. While you fight, there's a question we missed from earlier. From Bullfrog, are you planning to add tier 5 uh, skill cards? We thought about it, it would definitely be fun. They'd be quite hard to get to, but definitely be viable late game, you know, as you unlock the stronger loot that have kind of higher numbers. What do you think, Angela? I. It, it always felt a bit weird that you would go to Fire 5, for example, and you wouldn't get a bonus. Mm -hmm. um, I was thinking, if not tier 5 cards, at least some other form of reward, because if it's a, if it's a card that's even stronger than our tier four, I would be afraid that it would be a bit too, too strong and kind of like auto win. Um, but instead, a different reward for getting that high would be nice. But I haven't um, pinned it down just right. It could also be an idea for Guild of the Journey too. Yeah. Yeah, is go go deeper and stronger with those, or or look at like combinations. So having fire three and crush three gives you some new trait, you know. Mm -hmm. okay, we'll, we'll, there's definitely potential for the future. There is a lot of design space in Guild. Yeah, Guild is great that way. Um, I think in terms of exactly design space, it has a lot of it. Mm, let's go over this way. Okay, we're going to get this nice um, Phantom of Knowledge. Increases your hand size by two in the next fight. Let's do it. So there's a lot of new sound effects that have been added in Ultimate Edition as well, compared to Classic. Uh, there's another question from Just Die. Uh, have you considered workshop mod support? Maybe for the engineering too? Yeah, I mean... Now the the way we've built this, it wouldn't like it would take a good bit of work, but it'd be quite possible to, for example, expose all the card data and let that be moddable, uh, all the monster data, so you know their health and their which cards they have in their deck and their traits. That would be moddable, and same with the classes. So though that kind of level of stuff should should make things moddable, so people can make new classes, new cards, or just change monsters. Um, there is a good bit of upfront work in making your game just kind of support that, even with Steam, which does a good bit of work. Um, we're, we're launching on more than Steam, so it's definitely not a priority, like a first priority. We want to make sure everything we make is going to go everywhere we're, we're releasing the game. Um, but I think it would be very fun and it would give a lot of longevity to the game. You know, people love Ultimate Edition, play it through several times. And then make mods or play other people's mods. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, we'll definitely, I, I, we'll definitely think to, about it. I would love to allow players to make their own levels and then play other people's levels. Yeah, um, we have a kind of our own little level editor. Uh, it's definitely not ready for public consumption. But yeah, you you can imagine a level editor. Be fun. Um, we've got a couple cool things here. So here's Blade 2. This used to be in Guild Classic, it just was deal two damage and deal a third damage if their attack is unblockable, which is kind of confusing, but basically it's either two or three damage. The new way we built Blade, and we have some other changes to the whole Blade tree that aren't in this demo, but are, are coming soon, um, is to instead give a negative trait if you land the attack. So the whole rethink of Blade, because we thought Blade and Crush were too similar, we've changed Blade around to be more interesting. So it's more about stacking debuffs. Um, so this one, it gives the enemy Decay, which is that um, negative trait. We should probably show that here on this kind of tooltip. 
um, that they will take extra damage every time you can deal two damage to them. They take a third damage. Um, so that is interesting. So this is an example of getting just a fork, which gives you blade one, and our built-in sword fighter trait gives us that second blade. So instantly we're getting to the more interesting cards. Um, but I do want to show Anchor here. So Anchor has Crush 2 and our little pot has a different uh, Crush 1. So this gives us Crush 2 and Crush 3 cards. This will be our first time getting a level 3 card. So I want to go for this. You can see how the power level starts to increase. And this also goes in your Guildopedia. Yeah, we want to max out that Guildopedia. That's just fun. Well, we might make an achievement for that. Maybe There's the Bear Owl. So the bear owl is a joke on D&D's owl bear. You can see it has the head of an owl, sorry, the head of a bear and the body of an owl. So it's not quite as scary as the body of a bear with the head of an owl. Okay, this is our last fight, this quest. So the, the first quests of all the kind of adventures are usually pretty, pretty simple. Okay, the imp. I didn't. I don't think I triggered that. But if you if you build around imps, they're they're weaker. What is it the one that are dead end? No, that's if they're surrounded. Uh, so that's something we haven't gone in enough, or strongly enough into. I think this idea that placement within the dungeon changes the behavior of monsters. I think we should go much stronger on this, like give fire imps an extra health and change recluse to minus two. So really you should only ever fight them if you're going to trigger it. I think that would, and you know, build lots more traits like this. And this is where it starts to become a, a guild two idea is to make the placement within the dungeon much more interesting. Cause I, I don't think it's something we've done enough of. Okay, this mission is very straightforward because it's the first mission of a set of three. That little well, dance they do is new. This is just really quite surprising. Thanks to yeah, there's a lot of fun nature. Against all odds, you're surviving. Next time, I hope you find more danger. Okay, so there's Angelo's second victory trait for winning a second mission. Now, victory traits, or these basic victory traits, that's it, you just get two of them. And at a certain point, an ever-increasing chance as you keep winning missions, you will get the advanced version of one of them. So we'll either get the minus health but um, tenacious trait one, or we'll get whatever the advanced version of Agile is. I don't know if you want to look that up. So these are two very aggro traits we've gotten. We're going to start Angelo, the Cat Burglar, always starts with Blade 1 and with Swift 1, which are pretty good to go with a Cat Burglar. It's all out attack, basically. Uh, it's worth noting some changes that happened to gold in, uh, income. Yeah, we were trying, we're trying to balance out the fact that with the two DLCs included in the game, you, when we launched the game initially, there was a region for each tier. So the grasslands, the jungle, and the dwarven mines that kind of went along with this unlock system and the amount of gold you gained. And then we've added two DLC that are kind of like bonus regions. So you're gaining, kind of gaining more cold um, just by playing through them, but we didn't add um, purchasable unlocks and part of the reason was it was just awkward to figure out, you know, to make it work whether you had or didn't have that DLC installed to make the unlock system kind of dynamically work with that. So instead, those those DLCs let you get new classes just by playing them rather than buying them, but you still gain gold. So the kind of economy was all messed up of Guild Classic once you had the DLC installed. Um, that's something we're trying to address. I mean, we have addressed right now in our build, but it's something we're going to keep a good look at and would love feedback on, even in, in the demo. I mean, the demo is kind of ends before you really start to, to feel that. It's kind of as you get through the grasslands and you start getting to the tier two items. And as you get through the jungle, you start getting to the tier three items. Are, 
is that happening at the right rate? I'm going to yeah, buy um, a blessing now. Yeah, and um, the, the costs and incomes for the game were made for the game without the DLCs. And now for Guild Ultimate, that includes all DLCs, all DLCs we had to readjust some numbers. This makes the tier 2 unlocks from 500 to 750 look scary. Yeah. However, the income later on increases and the 750 is feasible. We just want to make sure you don't get there too early. Yeah, yeah. So it's just about us kind of balancing the economy. Which is quite hard to get right because um, people play in different ways. People, Some people play for longer, some people lose more, which naturally means you're replaying missions and kind of gaining more gold that way. Um, so it's, it's something we're working on. Okay, so once you unlock a talisman, that's the other thing you can do when you go on missions. So you can pick your your class, your your dungeoneer, and you can pick a blessing. We only have one blessing unlocked. Oh, there's a bug. That's meant to be the little heart icon. Plus one heart for first two fights. I uh, tried to capture. Cool, cool. Um, okay, so this is defeat Embro's rubber ducky. Apparently, so this is in Ultimate Edition our way to get the rubber ducky back into the game because he's just a funny little tutorial um, opponent from the first game. So where is the rubber ducky? There he is. He comes back as a mini boss, so he has ten hearts. In Guild Classic, he was meant to be um, that you could not lose to him. And when we released the game, he, you were dropped into this first mission. You're not you're not meant to be able to lose to him. We designed his cards and his health to be such a way that no matter what you played with your chump, you would always beat him. And that is true. You can't lose to him with a chump. But um, some intrepid players found ways to lose to the tutorial rubber ducky, which was to beat him because you you can't you have like there's no way to not lose to him oh. with the chump. Um keep playing that mission to build up some gold but don't finish it and then abandon the mission which killed off your chump and then if you had 50 gold you could unlock the cat burglar and then you'd go back into the tutorial mission against the rubber ducky with the cat burglar and the cat burglar wow. was able to lose to the to the rubber ducky and we just thought that was very very funny um so we there's a there's a hidden achievement on steam if you if you do that so that was just people kind of like experimenting with the funny edges of the game. Okay, rubber ducky time. So that's one of the reasons why we felt we had to keep the rubber ducky in Ultimate Edition, even though we had made a tutorial where he was he had been fired from. Okay, what should we do in this mission? There's a chest over here with a very scary basilisk. That is not something you want to fight early on. And over here, equally scary ghost. You don't want to fight this one early on either. So the ghost has a new trait, Recluse. So if we build up around the ghost, they're not as scary. We've also put down a really... Ah. Oh, that's fun. Okay. Excuse me. Let's take on the Phantom of Blindness, just because conceal... I want to show the new conceal effect. Um, the Kobold is one of the new monsters, right? You might be muted, Angela. Uh, ah. Yes. And there are... People are saying that it's a bit too strong. I, I'm already considering nerfing it. But I would like you to see you fight it. Yeah. Now, we have a, a bunch of things. Like, we've got the blessing now to give us one extra heart. So that kind of... That by itself might be enough of it. You know, normally we'd have one less heart here. Um, we have our victory traits. So we don't just have these basic Cap Burglar cards. We also have Swift One and Blade One in our deck. So Swift One is, you know, an extra quick attack and a way to draw an extra card. So we're a lot stronger than like a starting cap burglar against this cobalt. But yeah, they do have some big attacks. Like here, that's, you know, three. Now we can do two against it and we can kind of ignore one of it. So that was evens. But that's not always true. If you have the wrong class, you can be in trouble here. Okay, so we're okay. Go in the quick attack. But, you know, we had two life left there, and we were much more buffed than you might normally be. Okay, armor two. 
Growth and Swift, so this lets us combo with our Victory Trait to get to a Swift 2 card. The same with this one. That's kind of a better. And the Dessert Spoon is Swift and Holy. So two good choices here. Do we want Growth to heal or Holy to do the Block Any? I think I'll go for the Block Any. Now, we're going to collect this Fountain of Blindness. That means our next fight is not going to be good for us. We definitely don't want to fight this Basilisk next. Or the Ghost. So I'm actually going to build a way. Let's not go towards any of these. If I connected here, our Dungeoneer would be drawn by this chest. Massively drawn to it. I wouldn't be able to stop them going in there. So do not connect it until you're ready. There's a tip. And don't put down the Basilisk until you're ready either. So we're kind of wasting a turn here. So, Bullfrog has a question, what will happen with the inconceivable achievement? So, one thing we can do is just keep it and make it just exactly as it is. If you lose to this rubber ducky, you get the inconceivable achievement. Um, it's not as, not as like, hard to trigger or odd, like kind of, you can have to sidestep the game a bit in Guild Classic to trigger oh. it. But we, we have a, a slight issue in that we want to keep the same set of achievements from Classic and build on them in Ultimate. Um, so we can't just start over because we're releasing the game as a kind of upgrade on Steam. So we kind of have to keep those historical achievements and whether people got them or not and build on them in Ultimate. So we've, ah. we've made sure that all our achievements are gettable in Ultimate, all the existing ones. And can you remember, Angelo? I think that's what we've got at the moment. Our plan at the moment is you'll just trigger the inconceivable by dying to this rubber ducky mini boss so it's definitely a bit easier to trigger than yeah than guild classic it. it's it can be it's a callback for people who know what the previous one is yeah mm -hmm. uh -oh. let's see if you will, will be able to win okay i definitely don't want to i don't want to do something like this yet because that would to be dragged back towards these these pre-placed chests have a huge pull on the on your dungeoneer so that's kind of why they have this four underneath them well if i had coins would say one or two okay so now we're gonna fight this um well, it's hard to see with the with the rune tooltip on top of it we're gonna fight this uh cobalt here and i have the phantom of blindness on me so we're gonna see the cool new conceal effect so this is going to be a test of our memory so in Guild Classic, we completely conceal this card. So we have, oh, there's no trade for it, but we have the Fountain, we've, we've drunk from the Fountain of Blindness, which means in this next fight, they have Conceal. Monster, monsters, battle cards are obscured. In Guild Classic, they were totally hidden, and this felt like basically just rolling a dice. You were no longer really playing. The whole battle was just, oh, I'll just pick kind of at random. And now you can start remembering. So we just fought a Cobalt, and if you keep fighting Cobalts, you start knowing. I actually think this is the two magic damage, block one magic. Okay. Boom. So um, I really like this change to Conceal, and it's the same effect as if you get the Confuse effect, has cool wiggly eyes, it does the same cloud thing over your cards, but it leaves the names of cards. So it's much less punishing than picking a card entirely at random. GB Aura, okay, that was clever. I should try to get that rubber ducky achievement. Yeah, it's a really funny one. And Roly, will the Ultimate Edition be a separate purchase or an update? So we just announced this um, a couple of days ago. Um, so the great news is anyone who owns Guild of Engineering right now, or really at any point, we're gonna upgrade to Ultimate Edition at launch. So if you own on PC, on Steam, or on GOG right now, um, you will get Ultimate Edition for free. So we're giving a big giveaway to anyone who owns uh, Classic um, in November. Um, we're also gonna, you know, if you're worried about buying it, oh, should we buy it now? We're, our plan is to slightly kind of uh, increase the overall price but have a very good discount for like launch week in November so if all you care about is I'm gonna wait and play Ultimate Edition the best thing you should do is just wishlist Guild of Dungeoneering itself right now 
and when we launch there'll be a big discount you'll get an email about it and that's a great time to buy um, if you're just super excited go ahead and buy now and play guild and then play the ultimate edition remaster when it launches um, you'll you'll not miss out much price wise it's going to be close yes bullfrog points out confused wasn't that bad you could still memorize the position of cards because we, we, we used to just flip the cards over when you were confused um, as, as I've said I've seen players who don't remember at all yeah yeah I've done it too because you, you tend to know that a confused effect is coming I mean not in this case but usually you'll see okay oh I'm not blocking their attack I'm going to be confused next turn and you go okay just remember the second one's that and the first one's that it's still easy to forget but I, it's a really good effect where you can you can put in some some prep like you can write them down if you want to you know you could write them down on a piece of paper and get around it um, I like the, the cloud system we've done in Ultimate Edition in that you can still forget what they are, but if you're paying attention or, you know, you can figure it out. I like it a lot. Um, and I especially like you this. You can make an informed inform guess. Yeah. So I th strike? I think it's just one damage attack. It's a pop quiz for me. Headbutt, I know, is two damage and they're going to do one to themselves. So we'll hit them with lots here. And we should be able to finish them off no matter what. I think this one damage, one self damage. But we'll finish them off with shift. So I like that, you know, that conceal effect was much more annoying in Guild Classic. In Guild Classic, I couldn't see anything. I just had to pick my cards pretty much at random. And it didn't feel like the whole battle felt negative. Now it's much more fun. It's kind of like a trivia test. Um... It's like there, I, I was able to know all their attacks from having played enough. And that feels good. So it's no longer just feeling like totally random. And that's a, a good move. Um, boilerplate is a new item we added in Ultimate Edition. And it adds one of the worst nega traits around. All magical damage deals extra damage. That is terrible. So you, you, better, you better know what you're up against when you pick this. I've... I actually can't remember what's what the rubber ducky does. Will mundane it, be bad? It does irritable and aquatic. Oh yeah, I could look at that. Aquatic has magic damage. Um, we have a couple good choices here. I think I like the sash for stacking up swift, which will get us to swift three. And this is a good time to show another thing we added. So there was no way in Guild Classic to look at your deck. We've now added in kind of this little button hiding in the character sheet a way to look through your deck as it is right now so one two three four five six cat burglar cards and then we have swift one and swift two and now swift three and then we've blade one holy one and growth one sorry i thought we had crushed it. that was the last last dungeon so this is a way to look through your deck as it is now so you can see we're getting swift one swift two and swift three they start getting really good okay i think we're ready to fight this guy it would be better if we could build a random, but I don't know if we'll get the cards. Ah. <laughs> okay. Let's try and build a random. Oh, I don't think we'll be able to do it. We don't have the cards to, to build around here. And I don't want to connect here, because... What, what do you think would happen, Angela? Uh, I can't see it yet. <laughs> okay, it's coming. You're watching the What's delayed the stream. So if I drop this um, curvy um, connector here and connect up the basilisk right now, I think I'll still our hero will still go for the ghost. So there's a level four chest in either That's spot. Okay. There's a higher level monster over here, which uh, actually slightly repels your hero. There's a same level monster over here. The ghost is level two, which is an attractor. Um, these pre-placed chests are a huge pull, but they are an equally huge pull since they'd both be connected. And then this is four steps away, while this is only one step away. So I think the way the, the pathfinding works is the, the Dungeoneer scores every reachable tile in the dungeon. A distance is a negative, a gold is various degrees of positive, a same level monster is a positive, a lower level monster or a high level monster is a negative. So they're kind of scoring each place and they just pick one place they want to go to, the highest scoring place. And because distance is a factor, really far away places won't um, pull as strongly. 
So it was okay to noting, get like that. Yeah, worth noting that um, the Barbarian would go for the level 3 monster. Yes, so that does change with classes. So that was the same in Guild. Uh, classic was certain classes. I mean, probably just the Barbarian, but there's now some traits as well. Um, the Barbarian specifically goes for higher level monsters, but they also have a huge buff against higher level monsters, so it kind of evens out. Ah. Pre-pause to us. Yeah, that's a good suggestion there. R Roly is saying a little space between the the you know, the cat burglar cards, the swift cards, etc. So you can see them in a group instead of one big list. The reason it's a big list is that we already had that kind of scrollable kind of a carousel of cards from where you examine loot in your guild when you're choosing about which um, loot upgrades to choose from. So that's us just, we had this idea of what if we could add a way to view your deck and we already had a, an interface way to, to look at any amount of cards. I agree with you, this is where we go into guild 2 territory. It would be nice to see a better way of connecting these traits, um, the skills, sorry not the traits, the skills and the skill levels to the specific cards they're giving you. But we can't do everything. So, the ghost has Tenacious. So they don't have that much health. They have less health than the kobold we just fought, and they're a level 2 monster. But if we do 4 damage to them right now, they won't die. So we've got to get them down to 1 and then finish them off. Okay, so they're blocking, but we can smash through it with this unblockable attack. Okay, and that's nice. We did three damage there. We've left them on one. That's perfect. We can now kill them this turn. Except they're trying to heal themselves here with this drain attack. So we have a couple choices there. We could block it, try and finish them off last turn. Next turn, I mean. And this kills them in two different ways. It blocks, but it's also quick. So it'll actually kill them before they're able to trigger this. See you later, ghost. I think Colm, you really like quick attacks. I do like quick attacks, yeah. Yeah, it's true. Um, now, we're, get, we're getting this level 2 choice from beating the ghost. Right after we make this choice, we're going to open that chest and get more loot. This one is cool. The flintlock gives fire 2, which gives you the fire blast and flame lash, and another quick attack. So anything that gives you 2 of one, one particular skill and one item is really good. And then it gives you a really good trait. Your physical attacks, so not these specific fire attacks we've unlocked, but your other physical attacks deal extra damage when you're on low health, when you're on half health. Um, so that's a really nice item, but we'd be giving up our swift three there from the dessert spoon. Scimitar will get to blade three, which is cool. What's our new blade three that isn't in this build yet? Sorry, I didn't answer the question. Um, so blade two we've changed in the demo build. Got it. Blade three and blade, blade four are changing. Yes, you want to give people a yeah. preview. Yeah. Blade three becomes a bleed. So the, it's the Do one damage if successful enemy bleeds. So that is the current blade four card. We're moving it to blade three. Um, so this blade. is, a, yes. they'll take a damage every turn basically. And then we're it making becomes, it becomes a mirror of fire three because I always felt oh fire three is so awesome. Yeah. But to get that from blade you have to go all the way to blade four. Exactly, yeah. So we're the the reason we're doing this is we wanted to improve the entire blade line, which we felt was the weakest skill line. So blade two, you can see the change there, they get decay. Blade three is what used to be blade four, so it, it gives them a bleed effect, so they take a damage every turn. And our new blade four is uh, giving the enemy permanent um, uh, extra damage from physical damage. So physical vulnerability. So you land that blade four card early in a fight, they will take frail. one frail. Yeah. They will take extra damage from all your future physical attacks. So there's a good theme there now to the new blade tree around all, all the attacks blade two, three, and four give debuffs. And that, that's really good. And it, it really makes the blade tree different to the crush tree, which was a, a weakness in Guild Classic. Um, Roly has a good point there about Tenacious. Yeah, in Guild Classic we had kind of the traits are grayed out when they're off. That's that's on our to-do list. We, we do need to have that. So when you're looking at a monster who has Fury, which is like they'll do extra damage when they're on half health, or you're looking at 
tenacious is it on or off yeah we should show that it's on when uh, when they have more than one health okay so oh this is a better way of getting at blade 2 let's do this and now we open the chest which will give us a bunch of level 2 and level 3 items it's kind of the same as the monster we just fought actually Okay, this is good. Now we're stacking Blade and Swift. Look at this. Swift 4 and Blade 3. Nice. So, we haven't even found a hat yet, but our items are all giving us Blade and Swift. And we have Swift up to level 4, thanks in part to this um, built-in victory trait. And we have Blade to level 3, also thanks in part to a victory trait. So this is really good kind of loot and character combination we've set up here. Um, I think we're set up to beat this rubber ducky. I've got a feeling that even if I connect to the rubber ducky, yeah. So because I connect to this chest, Angelo does not care about the rubber ducky and instead wants to go fight um, the basilisk. Okay. Maybe Bas you can taint the mine with, with, with some, some loot. Yeah. yeah. I think even treasure wouldn't wouldn't beat this because they're both level three monsters, right? There's nothing special about the rubber ducky. There's no goal um, tile. Ooh. But I haven't found any treasure anyway. Bullfog is, uh, is uh, worrying about fra uh, Frail being weaker, but also... Um, the attack itself the is strong. Two, the level 2 blade is, does 1 damage, the other one does 3 damage included. Yeah, yeah. So you'll see when you see the cards. Um, bleed, I think, does 1 damage as well. It's 1 damage oh. if successful. The, the level 4 blade three attack so it's still if successful they gain frail but like it's almost impossible for that to be blocked and um, so yeah we've, we've built that into things we we definitely want the level four to be better than the level three card yeah ah. and if it's not we are here to hear your feedback and to change it yes okay so the basilisk does extra damage when they do three or more damage so three damage would become four. So we have to watch out for some of their big attacks being really, really bad for us. Um, so I might just try and wear them down as quick as possible. Okay, so so far we're just trading. Could this be the end? Three health versus three health. It's gonna be close. Do I hope to draw? You can change your favor. Yeah, we may have to go for favor here. Let's see what they do. <laughs> oh, okay. This is nice. So this is a change. It is in Guild Classic, and the more recent versions of Guild Classic is this little sticker effect, which we did a lot of in Cardpocalypse. So in Cardpocalypse, you do a lot of stickers on cards. Um, so Ferocious is a attack is uh, causing this Savage three attack to become a four attack, and this is our way of showing. You were asking about you know grayed out traits and not things like this that affect your damage. This is a way better or way easier to notice visual change. So you're like, why is that sticker there? Well, it's from this trait. So they're doing four damage to us here. We're dead, but we still can draw favor. Um, we have to draw like Swift three, I think. Or Swift four. Ooh. Ah, it's not quite enough. <laughs> we got our Swift two card. Okay, Angelo, we hardly knew, knew you. There is nothing here you can do to stop this. If you had played throw cat instead of cat in the last round? You think? I'll be, be, I'll be on hands. one, they'd be on two, and I could have done it. I blame Angela. I blame a misplay. <laughs> An unnamed misplay. A sorry tale, a gory story, another hero dies for glory. In the ground they rest the head. Dead, dead, dead. It's good that uh, favor is more in your face so you can actually notice this thing. Yeah, so that was the example I gave before. I'd see my, I'd look at my cards and go, well, there's nothing I can do here. And I'd pick one and lose. And only afterwards would I remember, oh, wait, I had favor too. So it's great that that's there. Um, I do love the little X's when they're dead. In their eyes, very comic booky. And yes, we've unlocked something cool in Ultimate Edition. So you always did unlock the graveyard, but now we've added a new class to Guild of Dungeoneering, 
When you place your graveyard, you get the grave digger. Not just here to hide the bodies. They can accomplish something much bigger. Just give them a shovel, they'll dig up the loot. Sit back and behold the grave digger. Let's have a look at our grave digger. So they have these lovely tattered robes. Uh, Who will be our grave digger? Okay, I like Renee. Renee with her cool face paint. Okay, Renee. You're the new grave digger. So our cat burglar, who lives in here normally, in the hidden den, is dead. Um, if you go on one more mission without a cat burglar, a new cat burglar arrives. That's kind of the system we've done. Uh, chumps are special, so no matter what, chumps will always arrive immediately after they die. So it's just mm. so that you don't ever have a situation where you don't have a hero ready to go. Um, the grave digger. So the grave digger has only five cards in their deck instead of six. Why is that? Because we get more. Yes. Um, so this is actually good. It's an improvement um, to have only five cards because you are more likely to draw your your really good cards. Like I needed to draw that swift three card there or swift four to save me. And one last card in your deck is in kind of these basic cards that you want to move, move away from as you get better loot in a run is good. So they only have five cards. All their cards are good. So this is... Uh, if it works, it's it's two, two, one, two, two. You know, if you're just looking at raw numbers. So compared to something like the chump, this is really good. And what makes them excellent is this trait. Borrows an item from a dead dungeoneer and keeps it for the rest of their runs. So as soon as we bring Renee out for a dungeon run, they're going to get a random item from from Angelo, the cat burglar, right? Thanks, Angelo. Um, we can also go look in the graveyard. There's Angelo. Here lies Angelo. Not even Rejuvenate could help them now. We're going to have to change that. We're, we're changing Rejuvenate. <laughs> we might have to change our our flavor text for the graveyard. So the graveyard okay. is something we've improved in I'm Ultimate leaving. Edition. You got to go? Since I'm dead, I'm going. Okay. See you later, Angelo. Thanks for joining. We're, we're going to stop in a couple more minutes here. Bye bye, chat. Have fun. Thanks, Colin. See you later. Um, Bullfrog12, good question. Basilisk is too strong. Um, that's something we're, we're figuring out now with some of the new monsters we've put in. And this demo we've released is part of that, um, is figuring out strengths of um, monsters. And yes. The only grasslands enemy to have a four damage card now it's a three damage card plus their trait that makes it plus one damage um all the same it's four damage in the grasslands and that is a lot so really has a suggestion would be nice in the loot screen to be able to destroy a card to make your deck sm smaller instead of picking a loot yes interesting choice i think it might be too easy if it was instead of picking a loot we have it as a favor for two favor in the dungeon you can destroy a card and that was true in guild classic as well and that is kind of like advanced level deck building as you get loot oh you can also spend favor to trim your deck of bad cards um so we, we've at the moment got that in as a favor choice okay so i just want to show you how the gravedigger works Ooh. We can go to a different mission. So the Gravedigger, when we bring them here, should get a piece of loot from Angelo. And there, they got the hook. So they will always start with this hook, which gives them Blade 1 and Swift 1. So the early, kind of these first couple of fights are always kind of some of the hardest ones in Guild of Dungeoneering before you get your kind of loot going. So this Gravedigger kind of, and the timing and the random item you get can lead to some really strong starts with the Gravedigger. And that's good. We wanted the Gravedigger to be a strong class 
because he's kind of like a free catch-up mechanic. So if you're having okay. trouble with Gilded Engineering, you will naturally unlock the the Gravedigger, and they're a class who is naturally quite good. Any more questions? Because we're going to finish up now. What more is there to show? So the demo is live and playable for free for anyone right now on Steam. It's just scroll down a little bit from this broadcast and install the demo. Um, if you already own Guild of Dungeoneering, um, just update it to the latest version and hit play from your library on Steam. And we have a pop-up option to choose to play the Ultimate Edition demo. So the demo is also included in Guild of Dungeoneering right now. Um, give it a go. We'd love to hear feedback. Um, we have a Discord, the Gambrinus Discord. You can find that on the Steam page as well. Um, or from the main menu of the demo, there's a link through to our Discord. We'd love to hear feedback mm -hmm. in there. We have a channel for feedback for Guild Dunge Dungeoneering and the Ultimate Edition demo. Oh, oh no. I didn't know that. Rowley says, by the way, can't see your mouse, so when you say here, we can't see it. I was doing that this entire stream, uh, pointing at stuff, but the mouse isn't coming through. I'll fix that next time I stream. Hmm. Um, so the demo is available to play. Um, the Ultimate Edition is coming this November, and um, as part of a big giveaway, if you own Guild right now, or just before we launch anyway, anyone who owns Guild when we launch on Steam and on GOG, hey. we're going to upgrade you for free to Ultimate Edition. Um, so I'd absolutely love it if you've had fun here, if you can tell your friends about Guild or about the demo, get people to try the demo, that would be absolutely brilliant for us. Um, but thank you so much for tuning in. Um, that's it for me. Thanks, everyone. See you soon.